Welcome back to another Shadowverse gameplay video. Today we are going to be looking at a look at Stormhaven. Uh, I haven't really played the deck too much. This is actually going to be uh, one of the few times that I not even had, I haven't even tested the deck. I just uh, looked up some of the lists on uh, Game Press, uh, saw what some of the lists were looking at, and uh, just slapped what I thought was a pretty good list together. I'm pretty excited though. Uh, Hopefully we'll be able to see in this video, Dark Jean is apparently pretty good. I've actually seen Dark Jean in the few games that I've played against Stormhaven this meta. Uh, and uh, when Dark Jean, the kind of the the end of Tempest of the Gods had a lot of Stormhaven, and then into Wonderland Dreams where it was just a spawn meta where Dark Jean was like absolutely horrible, uh, was kind of the time where, you know, Darkshawn stopped seeing play and now being able to play Darkshawn again is just feels great. Uh, Lyriel is probably good. I think she's better than a, just a random card. Ooh, there's Darkshawn and Priest of the Cudgel. So a lot of the lists that I was looking at, they're playing the Snow White and Heavenly Hound. Probably for, you know, this matchup in particular. Well, for, you know, Aggro Blood in particular. I'm, maybe our opponent doesn't actually have a 1-drop, which would be kind of crazy. And uh, they're not actually running Pinion Prayer, Pinion Prayer, whatever you want to call it. And they're not running Sacred Plea, which I can see Globe of the Starways being better than, than Sacred Plea, so. Or being good enough that you don't need to run any Sacred Pleas, so, you know. Uh, Lyriel is going to come down here. Opponents, I mean, they have to be playing some sort of aggro blood. Maybe they just had a weird draw. Uh, there's Angel of the Word is fine for us. We can we can definitely be a little more controlly. Hopefully we draw something to play, just anything, right? Really, anything playable. Oh, that that just oh, that's just pretty bad. Uh, yeah, I think we can trade here. I'm assuming our opponent's gonna play a Knight Horde or whatever. A curse run back for a while. They didn't play Knight Horde. Show me like no. their opponent's draw has not been very impressive. It seems. Uh, I'm in a favor going for the. Do I want to be safe? Yeah, I'm in a favor of being you know safer in sword. I don't know what our, I don't know what's going on with our opponent like. So they had no one drop. Their two drop was Vampiric Fortress. Three drop, they'd have it. They had an Angel. I mean, I f I fully suspect them to be like the opponent to play a Belphegor here. I mean, obviously they have to. Or not a Belphegor. But why didn't they play last turn? Like, okay, now now I'm just confused. A Vait. Okay, that's fine. So I don't even want to give my opponent a force, but question. Uh, hmm. March here is here. I think it's fine. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I don't really think I want to give my opponent a four spot, so I'm gonna. Maybe this is wrong though. I don't think. Hmm. I mean, our opponent has to have Karabras here, like, how can you not have Karabras here? It doesn't make any sense, or, you know, some, there, there has to be some sort of plan, or... Yeah, there's the Karabras. It's actually kind of cool for us. I think if... Our opponent also might have Diabolic Drain, which... I mean, they could also just not be playing Diabolic Drain, who knows? So we have options here. Uh, there's the option to double Hollow Delco onto this, and then we get a cool, a nice board position. I like to go for the more aggressive line. So we're gonna poke this for one. Reveal, man. I remember when when Dark John was a. Uh, I mean, I guess Dark John was at the beginning of Tempest. This is 
Definitely the more aggressive line. But the, the more fun line. Good to knock our opponent into vengeance. It could backfire for us, but... I like this line a lot better. They have to have Diabolic Train. Like, what What other, like, crazy cards would you keep in your hand? Uh, Razor Claw onto that, okay. And uh, nothing. I mean... I mean, other cards, we, other options we had there were, you know, as my alarm goes off, if anyone heard that. But the other options we had there, you know, the, the Bird Kimmy Disciple is automatically two burst damage at any point that we wanted it. And uh, there's just like some decent options. Uh, looking back t at the deck list, Hollow Dogmas, there's actually two Hollow Dogmas in the deck. Uh, counting up, I think there's 12 amulets, and you can't really. Like, March Hares is like kind of an amulet it's not that much of an amulet because it's, it's at, you have to cast it on five and then you know it's a count on four so i don't really count it as one but so cutting that to two hollow dogma getting some more relevant cards so we don't just get hollow dogma flooded like we did in that game it's it is going to be against another haven player oh man dark Shawn's just really good I mean, Birdsong is like 100% keep. Lyriel is interesting here. Huh. I think we can find better stuff. And there is uh, better stuff in the Beast Call. Excuse me. Come on, one drop would be nice. No one drop. Okay, but we, we have like, you know. And like a essentially Haven hand. Our opponent likely playing Stormhaven, though. I mean, they could really be playing any type of Haven, and their first few turns aren't going to really be telling us much. Oh, there's Lyriel, anyways. Why the heck not? For the opponent plays nothing here, we're, we're probably going to assume more control uh, It could be Alana's. But probably not Alana's, or it could be Alana's or Aegis or I guess Seraph if Seraph is still a deck. Uh, Unica here. Okay, that's interesting. Now we're thinking, you know, maybe neutral. Could be neutral. Not really sure what the opponent could be playing. It could just be some sort of control leader version. So we're definitely ruling out Stormhaven. I guess it could still be Stormhaven. Maybe that's what they want. Okay, Pure Heart Singer tells us that it's probably going to be more control y. Uh, that's fine for us. We are going to want to. Negate some of the card draw out of our opponent here. I think uh, our opponent definitely has the advantage in this type of matchup, especially if they draw curate is one of the key cards I would like. I would like to say for our opponent here. Ooh, they could actually be playing a neutral sort of a deck, which would be interesting. Uh, not expected at all. Hmm. There's actually, you know, interesting options here. I think because the like, ideally, you know, if priest costs five, maybe I would cast priest. But uh, and I, well, we'll we'll just go ahead and make the play, and then be able to describe it later. So you know, if we cast priest, then I would like to use the. I would have liked to use this bird. Uh, what, I forget what it's called. Uh, but I would have liked to use the bird to trade in, and then have uh, keeping a two-one for me. But since an amulet comes into play, I wouldn't be able to keep it. But uh, having the prospects of playing a two-drop and a four-drop next turn uh, made me want to play the March Hares to be more mana efficient. Uh, Grimnir. That's a little annoying for us, actually. I, I 
I mean, I think our opponent has to be playing like neutral, right? And I mean the I mean the writing is on the wall, right? Gotta go there. I think it's better. I mean, this this gets plus two plus two versus this only getting plus one plus one. We'll see what our opponent has here. Uh, we're pretty good here against the uh, any. We're pretty good here against any like March Harris plans by our opponent. This is a sem semi annoying. It's not that annoying though. What lies in our opponent's hand, though, is what we're worried about. Uh, we're hoping Mikuruda is always the draw you're hoping for in this later part of the game. Uh, hmm. So we could just go directly to face. Okay, so this is definitely going face. Definitely casting this. And we haven't decided if. How do we get punished? Uh, I think this is... It's interesting. If our opponent plays like an Alice or some... Like, I don't even know if these decks would still play Alice. But if our opponent plays Alice, we kind of get punished for a value trade. But then it would have to be like Alice into a uh, Lion into something. Like, Alice into Lion would be really punishing. But either one of those on their own, there wouldn't really be a punish there. I think they were probably playing neutral there and they just didn't draw any payoffs or something, but we'll take it, we'll take it, you know, Storm, Haven, Haven is, you know, the least played class of basically this entire expansion. I think even in last expansion it was you know, pretty low on the, like, not last expansion, but the pre-nerfs, it was also uh, pretty low on the usage rates. And yeah, I, I can understand why, you know, the controlling lists are just like, lose to D-Shift, and are not necessarily favorite. The controlling list kind of had a, have a like a weak mid game. I would say like, if you look at the curve, like there isn't like any like bridge options that are costing a decent amount of mana, like six, five, six, seven uh, play point cards. Like there's Themis, but like there's not as much proactive stuff. Like you can't just say, oh, I'm at like eighteen, uh, eighteen life against. You know, against a control blood deck, and you're gonna slam down a curate like that. It just doesn't really work like that. Hmm. So first question is if uh, we're definitely keeping this uh, Hollow Dogma. It's a good card. It's better than any random draw. And then is Divine Bird Song too slow? Well, I think we'll just keep this whole hand. We're playing second, so we're, we we we're not ad advantaged here, and our opponent, you know, only redrew one, so we're probably not advantaged. But uh, the opinion prayer, opinion prayer has to be one of the one of the better cards to have, I would say. Oh man, globe. Excuse me. Yeah, I think we can afford to play Globe here. Getting a Beast Call is just... Okay, okay, well, that's also a, a possibility. But getting a Beast Call is just, like, superior than, I think, you know... Pinion Prayer uh, can be delayed one turn. Oh, that, that's... The uh, Summon Bloodkin's pretty annoying. Oh, well, main U here is, I guess, fine. I mean, if main U can trade for two of their guys. We're under a lot of pressure here. Uh, some of the better cards, uh, Priest of the Cudgel is definitely one of the cards we're looking for. And then we gotta assess here if we can afford to do the value trade into the Ambling Wraith. Uh, Garuda here is, uh, you know, it does, I think we can actually just go like this. Ooh, that's gonna be a nice one. Controlling a little about the board. Our opponent, I mean, they still have three cards left 
in their hand, which, you know, it's it's a lot of cards, to, you know, four cards left in hand. A lot of cards those could be. Uh, Vania is kind of annoying. Okay. Pawn's going a little more control -y here. Leads me to believe they have a pretty confident uh, lineup in their hands. Gonna be the priest of cudgel here. Uh, then we have we have an option here. Uh, I don't think there's a reason not to trade with the force, but uh, I don't think the one like we don't really have any followers with one attack power, so I don't think the extra damage here is gonna really matter. So our opponent plays absolutely nothing. Like what? What is the logic point that? Okay, well that's uh, a line, I guess. Okay, we'll try this line. I don't think we can just go ahead and, you know, play Beast Call Divine Bird Song. We're gonna have to start getting some sort of pressure on the board. Or some sort of pressure on their life total. We're getting two huge followers on the board. Technically, if our opponent doesn't, ru doesn't like, passes the turn, we have lethal, but... I mean, Karabas is the expected. So, we're still looking good. There's like these aggro bloodcrafts and then there's like the aggro vengeance bloodcrafts. So we'll see what our opponent's playing. I, I think we're in a fine position here actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, the golden wings will end you. Uh, potentially even possible that that's not even a good play from us. Hmm. I don't actually think we're under much pressure here. Enough pressure where it warrants us to put them into vengeance. Maybe it's wrong though. Then go Vania. I mean, like if they had Diabolic Drain, I think we'd be in like horrible position. If our opponent has to use the evolve at any point, I'm just you know immediately much less scared. Like, I think it's unlikely for our opponent to deal like seven or so, or I guess six without an evolution point. I do want to get rid of this. Yeah, maybe that was a little too passive on my end. It's possible. I'm gonna go with the Divine Bird song. We could also, there's also an argument to, yeah, maybe it's actually better to play Beast Call into Globe of Starways, because Globe, well, Globe gets us an amulet. So if Globe just drew one, then I think it would be better to get the Globe. But uh, in this case, I think it's fine. Uh, Imp Lancer is, uh, the opponent goes for trade, which is you know, a fine play by the opponent. I mean, basically, hmm. basically, they just need to deal four damage to us, four face damage, which, I mean, they, it's not un unlikely, you know. A uh, razor claw plus. Oh yeah, that that that's, that's definitely a misplay on my end. Definitely, I would say, the correct play since it doesn't really matter. What our opponent has, it would definitely be to evolve the Divine Birds. Actually, I guess not really. 
basically it's best to have the opponent at four there because we're at base, we're at a virtual four life because we're at the end of the turn at uh, their turn we would take one so at a virtual uh, four life they don't really have too many cards that are be able to burst four in one turn so like it did I don't think that deck's playing dark general so uh, a common line could be you know a blood wolf plus a razory claw to kill us or in this case double blood wolf if you put the opponent down to four, they're not actually going to be able to cast it because they'll die before uh, you actually die. But uh, you know that was pretty fun. Uh, pretty happy to revisit the Stormhaven, seeing that it's still you know it seems still pretty viable. I've always like this the Stormhaven versus Blood uh, aggro matchup is always kind of interesting. I think uh, Blood Control or uh, maybe even Vengeance more Vengeance oriented uh, ones are. Uh, Probably a little better. This one, if the opponent you know has a lot of one drops, it can get kind of out of hand. We actually won playing second there, but it was, it was a really close one. If our opponent maybe drew a little bit better, then uh, we they probably would have won that one. But uh, I hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, please, uh, if you, if there's any decks you guys want to see, not too much in the wallet section, or even if you guys want to see some meme decks, you can try and try out some of those. I hope you all enjoyed, and please remember rate, comment, subscribe. See you later.